Get ready and start your engines for our ninth annual aviation month on Savvy Broadcasting. Welcome to Savvy Business, Life Unscripted with your host, Christina Rivera, where our guests share their wisdom and valuable business tips, empowering our audience to expand their personal potential. Hi, Janine. Welcome to Savvy Broadcasting and Life Unscripted for our ninth annual aviation month. I'm so grateful to have you out here today. Um, we tried to get you Thank last you. year, but we are so glad to have you this year because we're going to talk about a very important topic that couldn't have been more timely, and that is resilience. And girl, you know uh, quite a few things about that. Uh, I do. <laughs> share with the audience who might not know you. I met you on a TEDx talk. Um, share mm -hmm. with the audience a little bit about your backstory. Well, gosh, how long have we got? <laughs> so it's a very long story. I have written about it in six books. And um, if people do want to catch my TED Talk, that tells a lot of my story. It was actually on, it's on TED.com, A Broken Body Isn't a Broken Person. But, you know, the backstory is I was an elite athlete. I was a cross-country skier training for the Olympics. I was on my bike training with my teammates. I was run over by a truck. Mm. And I suffered extensive and life-threatening injuries. I, I died um, for 10 days. I was in intensive care. They airlifted me in a helicopter. They told my parents I wouldn't live. I had, uh, I call it a death experience, not a near-death experience because I did leave my body. Mm. And um, that's a whole other story. And so I woke up 10 days later to find out that I was paralyzed from the waist down. And I spent six months in a spinal ward, got out in a wheelchair and thought my life as an athlete was over. And I guess what people find interesting about my story is when I was home in a wheelchair and a plaster body cast, wondering what I was going to do with my life, an airplane flew over and I looked up and thought, hmm, if I can't walk, then maybe I can fly. Yeah. And it was completely unlikely. And I was lifted into an airplane for my first flight in a plaster body cast and changed my life. And I mean, flying is a great metaphor for, for life itself, I think. I secretly think everybody wants to fly. And, yeah. um, and you know, I then had a goal and I the goal was to walk again so I could fly and I did. And even though I am a paraplegic, I am walking. Mm -hmm. And I went on and got my pilot's licence, my private, my commercial, my instrument, my multi, my aerobatic, my instructor. Um, <laughs> flew around Australia and ended up teaching people how to fly upside down. Wow. Girl, you know, I'm wondering, when I, when I hear your story, it makes me wonder how much of your, your personality played a part in, for one, you becoming an Olympic yeah. athlete and then taking that same resilience and applying yeah. it then to flying and everything else. Do you think that played a part? Is it your personality? Is it part built? What is it? Yeah, I think I'm um, definitely my personality. My nickname was Janine the Machine. So <laughs> I've always been Defiant, which was the name of my last book, actually. And I think that, you know, to me, Defiance is a really great quality. Defiance is, you know, saying yes to life and not letting other people set your agenda. And even though, you know, I was told when I uh, was in hospital in a wheelchair that I'd never be able to do the things I did before, you know, I said, okay, I'm not listening. I'm not going to listen to the negative talk. I'm not going to listen to what people tell me I can or can't do. I'm going to set my own agenda. And, you know, I mean, life has been extraordinary. I've done things that I never would have imagine doing but certainly the lessons that I learned as an elite athlete have served me well in recreating my life yeah and this is a great lesson not just for the aviators listening in today for aviation month but business owners because we are primarily a business there'd be so many times where in business it'll be tough and you'll want to give up or maybe your business will yeah. crash and burn and and you'll go under and bankrupt but you can get back up and do it again and yeah uh, and what I love about your story is that, you know, it, it actually brought you to such great heights, uh, quite literally. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, um, you know, you probably would have not thought of being a pilot prior. Um, you know, what, what do you think your greatest lesson has been since you've become a pilot? And, and, you know, what has it done for you as far as, you know, your greatest lesson in the cockpit? Well, there are so many lessons, you know, as I said, I've, you know, I started as an elite athlete when I was six or seven years, you know, of age. So I always had this um, philosophy of loving the hills. And that was, you know, I brought that into my life in so many ways. As an athlete, it meant I always trained on hills. I always took the hard option. So I'm not afraid of hard work. 
you know, and learning to fly was incredibly challenging because you can imagine when I got out, when I started and I was learning to walk again with this incredible, you know, I mean, I walk with a limp now, but Mm. I had to, um, as I said, I'm a paraplegic. I had to learn to use a catheter. I had a bag of medication with me. I turning up at a flying school with all these guys that wanted to be airline pilots. So Mm. I was really, you know, I mean, they looked at me and thought, she's never going to do this. Mm -hmm. So again, I used that mindset of loving the hills and just put my head down and worked really hard and Mm -hmm. really kept focused on what I wanted to do, my goals and why I was doing it. So, um, you know, I learned to be very present because Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, when I first started, I didn't know I was going to be, I I didn't even know I'd pass a medical. So it was just the next flight, the next lesson. And I would study for that and concentrate on that. So it learned, it taught me to be very present. Mm -hmm. Um, And I've also learned that, you know, as you talked about business owners, that sometimes in life things have to break down before you can break through. Mm -hmm. So when people are going through really challenging times, you know, I I tell them, just ask yourself, what's the gift in this? And if you look hard enough, you'll always find something. And life has a way of sort of breaking things down to make something even better. So if you can, you know, think about that, um, you know, it helps you to sort of stay really present and stay focused and look for the good. And of course, we know that, you know, science tells us gratitude is incredibly powerful, helping us maintain an optimistic mindset, which is something we all need right now. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one thing right now where we're talking about resilience, but uh, there's a lot of people out there who might have lost their job, not only their business, but Mm -hmm. what's next. And that uncertainty, I think, is what troubles people the most. It's not so much, okay, I lost my business, I can start over. But now with this kind of uncertainty, because this has never happened on the globe, where it's affected everyone on the globe. Absolutely. And, you know, I mean, I've, I've learned to live with uncertainty and fear. And I think, you know, for me as an athlete, my life was, you know, mapped out. I was going to the Olympics. I was in my final year. I wanted to be an exercise physiologist. Um, and so when that was taken from me, when my body was broken and all of my dreams and I had no idea what I was going to do with my life, it was actually a gift because, you know, I had this clean slate And, you know, I got to then recreate my life in a way that was unlikely and remarkable. And I think if we can remember that sometimes, as I say in my TED talk, you know, you have to let go of the life you have, you know, to get the life that's waiting for you. And, um, you know, and if we hold on to things the way we think things are going to be, we suffer. And, And right now, people are holding on. And it takes a great amount of courage to let go and just say yes, yes to whatever we're experiencing right now, and you have no idea what's around the corner. If you're enjoying our episode today on Savvy Business Radio, check out startupsmagazine.co.uk, a magazine in digital and print where they champion tech startups and entrepreneurs. You can find the latest, most innovative startups in each issue and their upcoming or last magazine focus on female founders and women in tech. They also have a fabulous podcast called The Serial Entrepreneur, interviewing female founders in the lead up to the issue. For their November-December issue, the magazine will focus on sport tech and reflecting on the year of 2020 and how startups will face 2021. Subscribe for free today at Startups magazine.co.uk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Janine, I know from my own experiences, there'd be times where maybe I lost a job or a relationship yeah. and you're like, oh, this is the most horrible thing ever. And then yes. right around the corner, some other opportunity you didn't expect. And it's almost like that had to open up, like this had to go yes. so this could open up and, and allow you to receive it. That's exactly right. You know, you've got to let go. And, you know, maybe it's a time to retrain, to think of a different career. I mean, we've all been through that, you know, experience of, you know, let's talk about relationships. You know, you're in a relationship and it breaks down and you think it's the worst possible thing that could have happened. But then years later, you know, things pass. Maybe you've met someone else. Maybe you're happy on your own. It doesn't matter. But you look back and you think, oh, that was actually the best thing that could have happened. And, That's what I say about, you know, resilience. I teach resilience now and I teach the science of resilience. And what I tell people is you're incredibly resilient. You already are resilient. The fact that you're here tells me that. You've already overcome 
so much in your life. So if you can use that, use those skills that you learnt and build upon those, you can, you can overcome any challenge. Yeah, and, and this is great. What I'm getting also from your story and, and what you've done is you said, I, I like the hills. You would go look for the challenges. And I think interestingly for myself as well is we often will avoid the challenges. We're like, yes. nah, this is, no, let's not go there. But it's, <laughs> but yeah, let's stick with easy and comfortable. Yeah, but sometimes even in flying, if you start flying and things start to get uncomfortable, that was happening for me. I started to do um, some stalls. They started to freak the heck out of me. Mm. And I was like, mm, do I want to do this flying anymore? But it's that when you, I've noticed for myself, when I stuck with it, you're like, okay, I yeah. didn't die. I'm still, <laughs> the plane didn't go down. Um, and it's that, you know, that if you just take one more step, you know, it's, yeah. it's not the end of the world. It's not no, that's right. Challenges. That's right. And, you know, I think I turn towards the hills. I tell people turn towards it. The things you fear are never as bad as you think they are. And, you know, if we continually build upon, you know, the skills of resilience. And so my background is in sports science. So I've, you know, created an online course at the moment where I use, you know, the science of resilience to teach people how to cultivate um, and overcome whatever challenges they're currently facing. And a great analogy is, um, you know, when I was, when I got my instrument rating, um, I remember the first time I um, was up at an Air Force base, I was surrounded by F-18s in my little tiny uh, Trinidad aircraft taking off. And I remember I took off and I was in clouds straight away. Mm -hmm. And I, I had to I had about a two to three hour flight and I was in you know instrument conditions the whole time. Mm -hmm. And I remember the joy, like, oh my gosh, this works. <laughs> you know, and I was all on my own and I flew all the way down to Bankstown Airport in Sydney. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, you know, I'd done the training. And it worked. And I had trust and confidence in myself in doing that. And it's the same with resilience. When you learn the skills, you know, okay, I know how to do this. Aha, I recognize this. I've done it before and I can do it again. Yeah, that was an awesome analogy because I recall when uh, I would fly with my husband, he would take us up in instrument conditions and you yeah. follow the ILS and you, you know, the instrument approach it, it is. And you were like, wow, look, you come out of the clouds and poof, there's an airport. But it's not just, <laughs> it's that you've, you've done the training so that when yes. you get there, boom, you do get to your final destination. But it's following that course, which it's, it's amazing. It's like it works yeah. every time. There's the airport. I know it's like it's a miracle, but it's not. It's, mag it's magic, but it's not. It's it's actually training, and the same with resilience. You you learn resilience, and you know what science tells us is resilience is a skill that can be learned. Yeah, and what what you realize, I think, if you go through any hardship, is it begins to get a little bit easier, and you realize, yep. okay, now I went through this, and the next time something comes up, you're better able to deal with it. And yeah, and you remind yourself, I've done it before. And, you know, I tell people, go to my website, janineshepherd.com. There's a lot of free tools there and exercises that people can walk through so that they can recognize the patterns. It's all about patterns. And on, in my TED Talk, you remember I have chairs on stage. And um, so those chairs represent a pattern. It actually is based on Joseph Campbell's, the great mythologist, on his hero's journey. Mm -hmm. And so we're all on a hero's journey, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Now you, you teach coaching right now. You are a coach yourself outside. Share how you got into yeah. that. I'm curious what, what brought you into that line of business and actually teaching resilience? Well, um, you know, I, I'm teacher trained, so it's always been, you know, I love helping people. I love helping people mm -hmm. learn how to be more competent in their lives, how to be stronger, how to recognize patterns. And so I created this course, which is my life's learning. And, um, you know, and I just really enjoy sharing that with people and you know I just I get I'm, look I'm a life learner I love to learn and I'm always learning myself so you know when I uh, finished when I had my accident I went back and finished my university degree in sports science and I went on and continued learning um, you know the science of positive psychology and coaching and um, and you know I, I sort of weave in all the lessons that I've learned from being an athlete my entire life and the lessons I've learned from flying, which is actually when I'm speaking, I'm, I'm using a lot of, you know, sort of metaphors and analogies of flying because I think it's a great way to teach. Mm, it is. It really gets it inside of you. Um, we're about to head on out here and I want yep. you to share with everyone where they can find out more about you. And then we're going to leave one aviation tip, if you could, for any inspiring aviator or anyone out there who's desired to do it but are a little scared. But let's start with your website first. Okay, well, it's easy, janineshepherd.com, 
Mm-hmm. And they can follow me on Twitter at Janine Shepherd. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, Janine Shepherd. I'm on Instagram, Janine underscore Shepherd. Facebook, Janine Shepherd, author, motivational speaker. And they can learn more about, um, actually right now they can sign up on an early bird list to learn more about the 12 Steps to Resilience program, which will be launching in the next few weeks. And just, you know, reaching out to me. I'm always happy to take people's questions and I'll do my best to answer them. That's awesome. Now, one tip for any inspiring aviator or person who's ever thought of flying. Do it. <laughs> and the tip is I have to say that a formula that we teach in flying, because, you know, I'm an instructor, is an attitude plus power equals performance. So, you yep. know, if people think about, you know, maintaining a positive attitude, mm-hmm. you know, um, power is the amount of work you put in, you will achieve, you will you will perform. It's a mathematical formula and it doesn't fail. And I've used that formula in my life, uh, my entire life. You know, not only did I learn to uh, live, but I learned to walk, I learned to fly, and um, I learned many lessons in life through flying. Well, you've been such a gift to the world and offered such wonderful wisdom. Anyone sitting there on the fence thinking about going to fly, (laughs) just go do it. Do it. (laughs) And wherever you are, realize that through resilience, you can conquer anything. So just keep at it. Do not give up. And Janine Shepard, I just have to thank you again for coming to Savvy Broadcasting for our ninth annual aviation month. Thank you, Christina. And wishing you all blue skies and tailwinds. Yay. (laughs) Bye. Bye. If you like this episode, please share and leave your comments. To find out more about paid sponsorship opportunities or how to become a guest, email Christina at lifeunscriptedradio.com.